Hi! In this video, we'll take a look at how to build a tracking generator for the HP 8560-6B Spectrum Analyzer. And if you have been following my videos, you will know that I acquired a HP 8560-6B Spectrum Analyzer a couple of months ago, and since then I have been doing some experiments with it. Unfortunately, HP 8560-6B does not come with a tracking generator as a standard configuration. So this means if you are going to do a lot of analysis on filter characteristics and uh, amplifier bandpath uh, characteristics, then you will pretty much have to resort to the manual uh, method, like what I illustrated from my previous video. So I would recommend you uh, go take a look at my previous video to see how you can manually sweep through the uh, frequency band of interest and use your spectral analyzer uh, to uh, view the filter characteristics. And of course there's really nothing wrong with uh, doing this manually. In fact, if you have a very good RF source like the one I have here, uh, HP 8642B, um, then you can actually trace out the frequency response ra rather accurately. So if you don't uh, do this type of uh, analysis very often, you may uh, be okay with doing it uh, manually. Uh, every time you wanted to analyze a filter or something like that. And the uh, only drawback, perhaps, is that this method is very slow because your sweeping frequency uh, from the RF generator is not in sync with the, uh, the sweeping frequency of your spectral analyzer. And another limitation is that if your circuit under measurement uh, exhibits some time variant frequency response, meaning that uh, the frequency response uh, differs depending on the time you take the me measurement, then perhaps this is not the best way to do it manually because uh, by the time you sweep through the entire frequency band, the frequency response probably would have changed many times so that the final result you obtained is uh, not an accurate result. HP actually did make uh, tracking generators for the 8566B. For example, the, uh, I believe, 85 uh, 645A and 6044A. The 6045A, I think it's a higher uh, spec unit that are both made for as a tracking generators for the uh, 8566B. But a uh, quick look at the eBay uh, listings, they're actually quite expensive. They're more expensive than what I paid for this uh, uh, spectral analyzer. So I probably uh, am not going to get it. And so I thought, why don't I just uh, take a look and uh, see if I can come up with a tracking generator and build it myself. So a quick search on the internet, I found that uh, uh, quite a few people had already done that. And John Miles at uh, KEF, uh, KE5FX, and uh, another fellow is a Curious uh, Mark by the handle name on YouTube, uh, both did something similar to come up with a uh, tracking generator, uh, at least for the 0 to 2.5 gigahertz baseband for the HP 8566B. Uh, the method they used were uh, pretty much similar and not quite the same, uh, where John used a plugin, I think it's for his uh, uh, 86222A RF plugin, plugin and uh, Curious Mark used another plugin for the HP 8350B signal generator. Um, I thought maybe we can do something even simpler uh, just by using some off the shelf components. So let's take a look to see whether we can do that or not. Before going any further, I'd like to first just uh, take a brief look at how a tracking generator works. So the idea of a tracking generator is a uh, to present to the spectral analyzer the same frequency that it's currently looking at. And in its simplest term, uh, we can find that in every tracking generator we have a mixer. Uh, this mixer takes in the LO signal, the local oscillator, uh, typically your first LO, and uh, subtract that with a fixed uh, frequency typically is your IF, the first IF. So then we come out with this uh, tracking signal. Signal. And when we sweep through the, uh, the frequency range, when the first LO sweeps through, uh, the tracking signal 
would uh, have the exact frequency at any given moment uh, what your spectral analyzer is at that moment looking at. For a HP 8566B, uh, it has many harmonic bands for the microwave frequency ranges and its baseband is uh, from 0 to 2.5 gigahertz and with a uh, first IF of uh, 3.6214 gigahertz. Okay, so this is IF and this is the frequency range. And for the first harmon harmonic band, uh, it, the, the IF is uh, 321.4 megahertz. And actually, uh, the IF is the same frequency for all the harmonic bands. But in the first harmonic band, the uh, frequency range it covers is uh, 2.0 to 5.8 gigahertz. And later on, I will show you that, um, in fact, um, you know, by locking the frequency band, we can kind of squeeze out a little bit more performance. So for the first frequency band, for example, uh, we can actually analyze signals for, uh, from zero all the way up to 2.58 uh, gigahertz. And for the first harmonic bands, we can actually uh, measure signal as low as 1.67, uh, 68 uh, gigahertz and as high as 5.88. So uh, we'll see a little bit how that is done, but uh, right now we, we just want to uh, you know, take a look at these two uh, IF frequencies and uh, figure out what we need in terms of the uh, specifications for the mixers we're going to be using. So if we take a look at uh, uh, our simple diagram that I did a few minutes ago, uh, if you take a look at this. So for the first LO and, uh, uh, sorry, for the baseband, and for uh, the first harmonic band, we could use this uh, type of uh, uh, this topology to obtain our tracking signal. Uh, the first LO, for example, in the baseband would be 0 to 2.5 gigahertz, and then we would supply a 3.6214 uh, gigahertz IF signal, uh, sorry, the RF signal. Uh, so after subtracting that from your uh, first LO, you will have our 0 to 2.5 gigahertz uh, tracking signal for the baseband. And similarly, for the first harmonic band, uh, let's just say uh, it's from 2 to 5.8 gigahertz, right? So again, uh, if you put in your LO signal, which in this case would be, uh, you know, up to 6.2 uh, gigahertz, and then the IF, as we mentioned earlier, is a 321.4 megahertz, then after we mix this two signal together, we also get our tracking signal. So the requirement for our mixer, at least for the first, uh, the base frequency band, is to be able to mix, mix a signal from 6.6 .6, uh, gigahertz uh, all the way to 6.2 gigahertz. And the IF uh, would be from zero to, so this is the RF slash ILO, and uh, the uh, uh, the IF would be from 0 to 2.5 gigahertz. Of course, uh, if we were to include the, uh, the first uh, harmonic band, then the RF or LO would be starting from 321.4 megahertz. And uh, uh, mixers covering that wide of a range t is typically pretty hard to find, at least in, uh, you know, cheaply at a reasonable price. So I'm going to concentrate on from 3.6 to 6.2 gigahertz. But most mixers, uh, especially the ones uh, not active mixers, the, the diode ring mixers, uh, the ring mixers, they can operate, you know, outside their design specification quite a bit. So, um, so I think that's what I'm going to do is trying to find a mixer in this range. And a quick look at the uh, internet. I found uh, this uh, mini circuit ZX85, uh, uh, sorry, ZX583 uh, mixer. So if you take a look at its uh, uh, specification, it goes from 2.3 gigahertz all the way to 8 gigahertz. So an IF actually goes from, uh, I believe it's a DC to 3 uh, gigahertz, okay? So this is exactly what we need. Uh, as you can see here that, um, 
the LO, it's uh, you know it's uh, within the range of this mixer, and uh, the IF it's uh, zero to two point five gigahertz, and here we have a uh, up to three gigahertz. Uh, where is it? Uh, let's see, up to here we go, DC to three gigahertz. So I think this is uh, something that I will be picking up as the uh, the mixer. And I just took a look, and it's you know it's not that pricey. It's only uh, at least right now the quoted price is forty six point ninety five. So actually, it's uh, pretty reasonable. I mean, if you find a mixer on eBay, um, usually they are you know they're not cheap either. So I think I'm gonna go with this mixer. Now let's take a look at how do we generate that uh, uh, fixed RF signal to offset the the, the IF. And if we are just operating in uh, baseband, as we uh, mentioned earlier, that uh, actually let me just redraw this uh, mixer here. And this is our LO, and uh, here is the IF, and here is our uh, RF frequency. So depending on the band we're operating in, uh, we need two uh, frequencies. One is a uh, 3.6214 gigahertz, which is for the baseband. And the other one is uh, 321.4 megahertz, uh, which is for the remaining uh, harmonic bands. And in order for the spectrum analyzer and the tracking generator to operate in sync, uh, this signal needs to be face locked to the clock of your spectral analyzer. So the solution is either to use a PLL uh, face locked oscillator or a signal generator that can be face locked to the spectrum analyzer. And since I already have a, a pretty nice uh, signal generator, the HP 8642B, I think I'm going to use that to generate the, uh, the, the, the RF signal at uh, 3.6214 gigahertz. Unfortunately, that uh, HP uh, 8642B does not go this high. So what I'm thinking is that if I have a, let's see, frequency multiplier here, we can generate a 1.8107 gigahertz and double that frequency to come up with our RF signal. So I took a look at a uh, uh, mini circuit site while I was there and I found this uh, uh, frequency doubler. Uh, if you look at this, this uh, ZX90-2-19. Uh, and this one actually can output between uh, 2 gigahertz to 3.8 gigahertz. And I think that actually just might uh, meet the needs because I can you know, easily use this to input a 1.8 um, gigahertz signal and obtain my 3.6 uh, gigahertz signal. The ZX90-2-19 uh, is actually not bad for its price. It's only 35.95. Uh, and this add up with my uh, ZX well, the, the ZX83, uh, sorry, ZX05-83 we were just looking at. Probably, uh, let's see, adding up to be less than 80 bucks. And, uh, you know, that's a fairly cheap uh, if we can get this uh, uh, tracking generator work with these two components. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and order these. And, uh, and when they arrive, we will uh, take a look. Now, a few days later, my order arrived. So let me open it up and we'll continue. So this is the ZX90 which is a frequency doubler and as you can see it's tiny. Okay I'll open it up shortly and let's just take a look at the other package and this is the um, ZX05 so it's the mixer and it's uh, also tiny. So let me just open it up see what we got inside. Okay. So here, okay, so this is the, uh, the mixer. Oh no, sorry, this is the frequency doubler. And um, I'm going to also open up the mixer. And here is the mixer, not too much big, not much bigger. Okay. And it took longer than I had uh, 
uh, originally planned for this video uh, because of the holidays and uh, all the shipping, different uh, type of things to get the components anyway. So I got these uh, uh, mixers and uh, and uh, the frequency doubler. And let's take a look at the, uh, the frequency doubler. So this is, uh, you know, it's nothing fancy here if you can just uh, focus. And I think it doesn't want to focus. Anyway, so this is uh, the uh, ZX92-19, okay? And uh, this is our um, mixer, which is uh, a ZX053-S+. Uh, and in the meantime, I also picked up a uh, RF isolator. So this isolator, actually, I found it on eBay. This is from uh, uh, 3.6 gigahertz to 6.4 gigahertz. And uh, uh, the reason I think I might need one is, um, uh, you know, the LO signal, you wanted the LO not to be able to backfeed into the L, uh, into the oscillator. So uh, by using this uh, RF isolator, we can isolate uh, the input of the LO from the output of the LO. So in other words, uh, the the signal won't be back feeding into the, the, the LO output port and hopefully the uh, performance will be better, but we'll see. Okay, so now I hooked up my uh, uh, the frequency doubler, the mixer and the isolator and I just want to remind you what we're doing here. So I printed out this uh, uh, diagram and you can see that uh, the signal, the RF signal, here we go, would come, will be coming from the uh, signal generator uh, at 1.8107 gigahertz, and it would be frequency doubled to the, uh, the, the 3.6214 gigahertz uh, IF signal. And uh, on the left side, uh, this one is actually uh, slightly, is uh, the other way around. So this is basically our output signal from the mixer, and that goes to our device under test, and then uh, goes to the signal analyzer. And uh, so on the right-hand side here, this is the uh, this is our uh, isolator. So the first LO would be uh, coming in from here, and that get mixed with this uh, IF frequency, which is uh, 3.6214 gigahertz, uh, will produce the tracking signal. So let's hook it up and uh, see the moment of truth. Okay, as you can hear from the noise uh, in the background, I just powered up the uh, special analyzer. And I just want to show you my setup. And actually, I, I didn't have uh, too many SMA cables, which is something I probably will get to buy more. But right now, it's a, a setup like this. So here you will see exactly what I, uh, we, we planned earlier. So this is our first uh, LO output from the uh, special analyzer, and it goes into this isolator, um, and it goes into the RF port of our mixer. Uh, sorry, the, I, uh, the LO port of the mixer. And the RF port, if you come here, uh, if you take a look, this one basically is the output of the, uh, the frequency doubler, and it's hooked onto this uh, uh, HP8642B. Uh, which we will uh, adjust uh, the uh, the frequency a little bit. Anyway, so let's uh, see if it works. Okay, so let me first change the uh, frequency band to 2.5, 0 to 2.5, and let's come back here and uh, uh, I try to get it both on camera so you can see what happens when I change the, frequ uh, the frequency here. So. As we mentioned, we wanted a frequency of 1.8107. Uh, gigahertz, okay. And uh, our amplitude would be 10 dBm because the uh, RF, uh, the doubler, has some loss. So we wanted to give it sufficient uh, amplitude, okay. And voila, look. So here we have our uh, uh, track gen output and you can see it's pretty good uh, especially we don't have a RF leveling circuit at the very end we are just using the LO to uh, directly here so actually that's not bad at all and uh, yeah that's uh, that's 
I'm pretty impressed. So let's, let's first actually take a look at uh, a simple circuit that uh, I have to make sure that it's working properly. And here I just have a, a simple uh, board that has an LC oscillator on it. And uh, this one is slightly different than the one I used last time to test the, uh, the manual sweeping uh, functionality. And uh, so I just had a two turns and a, uh, and a 10 picofarad uh, uh, cap, so I don't know what the uh, oscillate uh, the frequency gonna be, but it's probably uh, several hundred megahertz I would guess because of this inductor is much less than what I used before So let's uh, hook it up and uh, see what we got And by the way the uh, the unevenness here and I'm it's not too much of a concern because we can always uh, uh, Make it flat by using some mathematics uh, for the traces so for this filter, let's first uh, set the frequency band uh, to be, you know, approximately uh, the, the right band. So I'm gonna say start frequency, let's see, uh, 100 megahertz maybe. And the stop frequency will say 600 megahertz. So that give us a pl plenty of room to play with. And it's already pretty flat. So I'm just gonna uh, put it in just to see what happens. So right now, as you, well, let me just move it down a little bit. Uh, it's hard to get everything in at all at once, but uh, let me take this IF out. So this is where uh, the input is going to be coming from this uh, mixer. Uh, as you can see, yes, we uh, now I started noticing we do have some, uh, uh, you know, it's not ideal. The isolation is not ideal because uh, this is not as uh, low as I had hoped. But we're still talking about at least 30, 40, uh, 40 actually, that's both down. So for our simple application, uh, for most of the, uh, the testing, it doesn't really matter that much. Anyway, so let me put a, uh, let's see here. So let me put a uh, SMA connector here. I'm just gonna hand tighten it. So uh, to put our device under test in, okay. And now I'm going to hook one side of the, uh, the filter here. And now the other side of the filter, uh, this cable is a little bit twisted. And hope it doesn't mind. Oh, whoops. This is going to be untwisted. Uh, yeah, I probably need to get a few of the uh, uh, this kind of uh, thinner uh, SMA cables. But anyway, so now I'm going to hook it up. Hopefully we see something... Uh, Ah, look at that. So let me zoom in here. So that is our frequency response, as you see. So nice and easy. So let's take a look at uh, what that frequency is. Uh, turn the marker on. Uh, oh, that's a negative uh, marker, so we need to shift N. Where's my N? There we go. So, okay, so resonant frequency is at two, 300, where is that, 200, I can't see. Um, is at uh, 321.5 megahertz, okay? So I think for the next experiment, I'm gonna take a look at a, uh, an amplifier to see the performance of the amplifier. So for the, uh, the second experiment, I think we're gonna take a look at this uh, uh, RF uh, amplifiers performance and the, the specific chip I have here is uh, analog analog technologies uh, ADL uh, 5536 which is a uh, RF game block from 20 megahertz all the way up to 1 gigahertz and it's rated for uh, roughly 20 uh, dB gain so I soldered this onto this uh, you know simple uh, uh, just a single-sided uh, RF board. It's not even etched. It's just uh, I cut cut out these uh, traces, and so we're gonna test how this one performs. And before I begin, I wanted to lower the. Uh, uh, before I forget, actually, I need to lower this uh, amplitude a little bit. Uh, this is RF amplitude because uh, our uh, gain would be around. Uh, so, so I'm gonna make it minus five, minus five dBm. 
Okay, so now as you can see that uh, uh, the curve here, by the way, I also set this uh, spectral analyzer to from 0 to uh, uh, 1.5, sorry, from 10 megahertz to 1.5 gigahertz, which is pretty much the, uh, the bandwidth that we're interested in. And uh, this time it's, it does show a little bit of dip on the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the mathematic function to, uh, to correct that. So for that, we wanted to turn on our, um, let's see, the line, display line, okay. And, uh, okay, so that is roughly right. And what we want to do is turn on, I think it's a swap A and B, and uh, uh, B minus line, turn it back to B, and uh, A minus B back to A. So now we should see, uh, think about this, so we blank out that, and we should see our A trace. So right now the A trace is corrected and it's a straight line. Now let me now just uh, uh, hook up this uh, uh, the amplifier and we'll see the performance. Okay, so right now I hooked it up and uh, I haven't applied power yet. So at the moment we can see this uh, uh, this is just whatever is leaked through, so it's not that important. And uh, let me put the power on, and hopefully, can see uh, we can see what is going on with this uh, amplifier. So let me hook up the ground and uh, hook up the power here. Oops, just kidding. Okay. Now uh, let's uh, zoom in, and you can see. Uh, this is the uh, our performance of this uh, uh, ADL 5536 amplifier. If you recall that uh, uh, before our trace was all the way down here, so which was like roughly 22 dBm, uh, dBm down, and now after the amplifier, uh, this trace goes up all the way to uh, just under minus. Uh, I think uh, uh, just under like uh, I think this is 0 10 minus of 20 dBm so uh, clearly we see this amplification from the uh, amplifier and also the curve is not totally flat uh, because uh, if you recall we use the mathematic function of the screen trace operation to uh, to flatten this uh, trace so as our baseline that um, uh, right now you know it's a little bit of uh, wavy and uh, you do see some like a uh, uh, drop off after uh, this one gigahertz line, which is uh, you know uh, before one gigahertz uh, from ten to uh, and uh, right you know at a ten is also a little bit of dip. So this amplifier you know looks roughly uh, pretty much uh, as what a data a data sheet uh, indicated that it's a twenty megahertz to one gigahertz uh, to twenty dBm amplifier and by the way um, this spectral analyzer is right now the clock is actually uh, locked with the uh, with this uh, uh, 8642b signal generator and uh, this is important because if you are let's say to reduce the your resolution bandwidth right and uh, um, you wanted to make sure that you know this frequency does not shift. So if the frequency started shifting, then you will see a different amplitude response. So right now, uh, let's uh, let's change the uh, sweep time down a little bit. Okay, sweep time down, and uh, yeah, it shows as a uh, uncal. That's okay because right now we're just uh, um, we are using our. Uh, you know, we're synchronized the trace, so this M cal is we can ignore that. But as you can see, right now we're down to 10 kilohertz bandwidth, and we're still viewing exactly the, pretty much the same uh, trace. So that's just one thing I want to point out uh, that is important that you have a uh, signal source that is locked to the clock of your spectral analyzer. So now we have a uh, 0 to 2.5 gigahertz uh, tracking generator for the HP 86, uh, 8566B. But as I mentioned earlier, uh, this particular setup 
is actually not limited to the bass band. And we can easily use this for uh, the first harmonic band as well. Um, so now I think I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what uh, that setup is like and we can hopefully see some traces on the uh, spectrum analyzer uh, for the first harmonic band as well. So now let's take a look at how do we uh, set up this uh, tracking generator for the first harmonic band. And the first harmonic band uh, automatically, if you're using automatic sweeping, is from 2 to 5.8 uh, gigahertz. So to enter that band, we simply put some frequency, let's say uh, right now, we just put a start frequency of 2.5 gigahertz, okay? Um, and um, then we can say a stop frequency, maybe let's do a 5 gigahertz, okay? So, um, as I mentioned earlier, if we lock that frequency band, we can actually expand the frequency range frequency range quite a bit. So let's go ahead and lock it. To lock it, I go Shift T. And you notice on the screen it says uh, harmonic lock is first. So after we lock the harmonic band, we can, uh, you know, again set the start and the stop frequency so that to, to maximum. So how I do that usually it's a, I say, you know, start frequency, I put it a very low frequency and it'll automatically adjust to its uh, minimum acceptable frequency, which is 1.67 gigahertz. And same for the stop frequency. If I say like, let's say nine gigahertz, then you will set it to uh, 5.87, okay? So after we set up the, uh, um, our uh, band on the special analyzer here. Let's come up here and uh, take a look at uh, what I changed uh, the configuration of uh, this uh, tracking generator. So what I did was, uh, you know, if I, you recall, I had this uh, frequency doubler uh, coming from the uh, tracking generator. And that's because our IF signal was sitting at 3.6 uh, gigahertz. Right now, because we're in the first harmonic band, the tracking signal, uh, uh, sorry, the IF signal is only gonna, the R IF signal is only gonna be uh, 360 uh, some odd megahertz, okay? So we don't need, uh, we do not need that uh, uh, frequency doubler anymore. We can just simply feed that directly from the uh, frequency generator. So let's take a look at uh, uh, our frequency generator here. And uh, so right now it's still sitting at uh, 1.8 gigahertz. We're going to change that to uh, frequency 321 point, uh, I believe it's 0.6 um, megahertz. Megahertz, okay. We turn on the RF. And uh, we change it to, whoops, uh, change it to, let's see. Hang on, I didn't want to change that. I changed the amplitude to uh, to 10 dBm again, okay? So now, coming back here, you can see that uh, this is the, uh, the response we currently have. Oh, sorry about that. It's not a uh, 321.6, uh, I think it's 300, um, it's 0.4. So actually, that is very important because otherwise you won't get the maximum uh, frequency response here. Anyway, so as you can see that uh, our frequency response is, uh, you know, it's uh, not flat by any means, but um, one reason I suspect is that uh, this mixer I'm using here uh, is unrated for mixing signals from 2 gigahertz to 8 gigahertz. So 300 megahertz is significantly lower than what uh, we typically uh, use this uh, mixer for. So that could uh, very well like attribute it to this uh, uh, weird shape. But uh, you know, for the majority of the part, uh, so this is actually all the way up to 5.8 gigahertz, right? So if you look at this, right, so within this range, it's still very useful, uh, very useful rather. So let's say we, we go to um, start frequency of, uh, let's just say 2.5 gigahertz because we can already cover zero to 2.5 in our first frequency band. So we start with 2.5 uh, gigahertz, okay? 
then let's say you know where the drop off is so let's say it stopped at 4.5 gigahertz and as you can see this is actually really not bad uh, even though it has some like 10 uh, decibels uh, differences but after we correct this we can still use this um, uh, tracking generator to test uh, to do a lot of tests for filters and amplifiers within this uh, uh, you know first harmonic band and uh, I suspect if you wanted to you know use this tracking generator for this band you can probably change some of the components I used here to make it more suitable for this frequency range so I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, uh, this video is a little bit of uh, longer and also covers some of the technical aspect of a tracking generator so I might decide to actually I, I will likely to uh, uh, to do a write-up on my blog and uh, lay out the details so that you can refer to uh, when you need to build your own tracking generator even though this is very specific for this uh, HP 86 8566B and the same principle really applies to pretty much any signal uh, tracking generator any special analyzer rather uh, with the uh, LO output even for the ones without LO output I suspect you can you know find a point where the circuit is uh, uh, where the LO signal is located and add a uh, you know amplifier and so it's not intrusive and then you can use that output to do the same uh, tracking generator build and of course you know compared to uh, the one John Miles and the one Curious Mark did uh, this generator this tracking generator performance probably is not as well as theirs because it, it simply doesn't have a uh, leveling circuitry at the very end we rely on the LO to drive our uh, test signal here to drive our test uh, sorry device under test here and uh, um, of course you know you can always add on things for example RF amplifier and the leveling circuit uh, to to further uh, to make it further uh, you know much better than this and uh, but this is a really I think a very good uh, tracking generator if you are just doing occasional testing of uh, filters and uh, uh, stuff like that so um, also the cost of uh, this track generator is relatively low as you saw I mean for my specific setup it's less than a hundred dollars even if you have to uh, if you don't have let's say if you don't have a, a signal generator and you wanted to buy a PLL uh, oscillator to lock onto your tracking generators uh, clock output and that will you know also uh, you can also find a lot of those uh, oscillators on eBay for a reasonable price and you can still build this uh, tracking generator for under $100 anyway I hope you learned something new and as usual uh, do subscribe to my channels and to my channel and uh, if you have questions send me an email let me know and uh, I'll try to answer if I have time and uh, also uh, please uh, give it a big thumbs up if you like the video I will talk to you next time